Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna do a quick look at the Mark 47. I know you guys have seen plenty of stuff on the Mark 47. More specifically, I'm gonna take a little bit of a dive into my Mark 47. The reason I'm gonna do this is because on social media and all over the place, you guys are always asking, what can I do to my Mark 47? Well, I've got an older variant. I mean, this is old school, I'm talking 2015 run. It's still got the old logo on it, says it was built in Fayette. So when this came out, there weren't a ton of accessories for them. So I've kind of decked this out a little bit over time. Uh, and since then, we've really started decking them out nicely from the factory, so you don't need to do any accessorizing. Uh, but I'm just gonna show you what you could do if you wanted to. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this thing real quick. All right, so just starting off, let's just go ahead and take a look at the muzzle in here real quick. Uh, I do have a suppressor on this at the moment, uh, but you can see that I actually have a mount specifically for that suppressor on the end of my Mark 47. So this is a 16 inch barrel one, again, one of the early versions before we started going shorties, uh, before Banshees even existed, anything of that sort. So, 5 8 by 24 thread is going to be the standard 30 cal thread. So if you want to change out your muzzle device on your Mark 47, the main thing you want to look for is 5 8 by 24 threads, uh, 30 cal diameter. Uh, we offer a variety of those, including a lot in our new zeroed lineup. So muzzle devices are pretty easy. Going ahead and moving back just a little bit, let's go ahead and take a look at the handguard itself. As you can see, this is not a standard CMMG handguard. Uh, our new handguards are incredible handguards. We've definitely changed the ergonomics on them a lot to make them a lot more comfortable compared to what they were, let's say, key mod <laughs> when I first uh, bought this. Uh, but the main thing to look at when you are looking at a handguard for a Mark 47, if you wanna choose one other than one of ours, you wanna look for something that is DPMS high patterned. Uh, so you can't use a standard AR-15. Uh, 308 ones are, they're a little tricky sometimes because a lot of different companies say a lot of different things on what they are as far as fitment. The main thing you wanna look at, again, DPMS high pattern, and it should fit up and the pick rails should line up nicely. Quick little look underneath, uh, 0.750 uh, gas block journal. So 0.750 low profile gas block. I still have the original one came on there. But if you choose to possibly run different powers or something of that sort, and you want to change it to a adjustable gas block or something, you could. Um, I typically don't see the need to change out the gas box since it runs just fine with the one that came with it. All right, moving back a little bit more, you are going to see old school upper and lower here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this chamber flag out here. Uh, this is just there so you guys know that it is in fact empty. I am gonna go ahead and take this thing apart uh, just because there's a couple things to show you here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the upper itself. Uh, standard Mark 47 upper, old school. When it comes to optics, man, you can, it's pretty much sky's limits, whatever you want. I've had red dots on here. I've had red dots with magnifiers. I landed on a one to six, I think it's one to six. <laughs> uh, yeah, one to six uh, Crimson Trace Hardline LPVO. Uh, great option for this. One power gives you, you know, nice quick target acquisition. Six is typically going to be magnified plenty enough for most 762 by 39 use. Okay, taking a look at this, I do have the standard Mark 47 bolt carrier group in here. Uh, as far as the charging handle goes, for those of you that aren't familiar, the charging handle on the Mark 47 is different because this is a mid-size platform. So you cannot use standard AR-15 and you cannot use um, 308 size ones. So you do need something that is made specifically for the Mark 47, or you might even see something that was made specifically for the Anvil, because uh, that is a product that we had out previously and did use the same charging handle. There are a couple companies out there that do make uh, varieties specifically for the Mark 47 and Anvil, uh, but you can always go with the tried and true, you know, standard ones or the zeroed ones. Uh, there have been a couple varieties I've gone through over the years. I had our first Ambi charging handle, which was very large. Uh, and it was okay compared to the stock, you know, mil-spec feeling one. Uh, but when we went to the zeroed ones, I had to upgrade to the zeroed one because it just feels so much better. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the lower receiver here. Again, this is old school logoed 
Fayette stamped Mark 47 lower. Um, this predates any ripstock or fastback or anything of that sort. So I still have the traditional lever pull and everything on my Mark 47. It is a standard length buffer tube or receiver extension, whatever you want to call it. It is mil spec diameter. So whatever stock you would like to put on there, you can. Uh, we have our rip stocks on the current ones along with that fastback receiver extension. I think it's a nice pairing, but again, this was before that stuff existed. So I had to deck it out in some way, shape or form. When it comes to the buffer and spring, it is proprietary Mark 47 stuff. So you don't wanna use anything other than proprietary Mark 47 stuff. Uh, when you get into the trigger housing and everything, the trigger group is standard mil spec stuff. Uh, so it's regular uh, locations on the hammer and trigger pins. Uh, same, you know, regular locations, regular uh, diameters. So you can kind of do whatever you would like on there. I would highly recommend our new zero drop-in trigger because we actually designed that for the Mark 47 Descent. Uh, so it actually has a heavier hammer spring to really make sure that it smacks primers, especially on like, you know, old 762 by 39, you're gonna get a solid hammer hit. I have a hyperfire in mind. Uh, hyperfire triggers are something that have a little bit of an extra spring in here also. Um, this was extremely reliable for me on that old 762 by 39. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that it really smacked the primers good. And this existed before our new zero trigger. If I were to be doing this today, I would definitely get the new zero trigger because the pull on it is incredible and it's really gonna smack those primers. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, as far as the grip, any standard AR-15 grip is going to work just fine. Uh, so deck it out however you would like. The new ones are all going to come with the zeroed uh, grips on them. Uh, as far as the safety, pretty much any mil-spec style safety is going to work. I like running ambies, and I've been running the old mil-spec style ambies for quite some time. So I'm just a creature of habit. That's what I run on mine. Another little feature that some people aren't necessarily familiar with uh, on the Mark 47 is there's actually a pin right here uh, that you can access via a set screw on this side. And there's also a pin that removes the magazine latch that is available by a set screw on this side. Uh, so these are removable and replaceable parts because the receiver itself is made of aluminum. But you do get some people that want to run old surplus magazines that are steel or run in a steel magazine into these it's possibly going to introduce wear on the aluminum before it wears on the steel. Uh, so these little pins are actually made of steel, so they're easily replaceable, or they're typically just not going to wear as quick as aluminum would, so you don't even have to worry about it. Again, mine's old school. I do have metal feed lips on some of my magazines uh, and metal uh, latches and everything, uh, and I've never had an issue with this. All right, another question we get a lot is what magazines work in a Mark 47? Well, obviously, AK magazines. Uh, we ship them with PMAG AK magazines, uh, typically just going to be the polymer magazines. Remember, rock and lock. They're going to get right in there. They're going to lock into place nice. Uh, you have an easy access removal just by flipping this tab. Uh, you can actually reach it with your index finger, too, if you're right or left-handed. Uh, so again, you know, standard PMAG, uh, AK mag is gonna work just fine. I do also have one of the steel reinforced PMAGs. Rocks in there just fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at, this is a Circle 10 uh, AK magazine. So uh, these have been deemed possibly some of the best magazines out there. Locks in perfectly fine. US Palms. These are kind of a fun magazine, translucent. Uh, they lock in nice and snug. And then I even have like an old X-Tech here, which is kind of like the US Palms. Uh, it does have some steel reinforcements, locks in nice and tight. I don't have any feeding issues with any of those magazines. Theoretically speaking, since this was designed to take AK magazines, it should work just fine. Now regarding the bolt carrier group, keep in mind, since this is a mid-size platform, the bolt carrier group is proprietary. It is designed specifically for the Mark 47, so that is not replaceable. Uh, so you do have a few proprietary parts on here. Other than that, let's go ahead and go from the back to the front and just again, go over the stuff that you could replace if you'd want to. Otherwise, you can always buy one nicely decked out with our zeroed accessories directly from us. But starting on the rear, 
You do have a mil spec diameter buffer tube. So any size mil spec buttstock would work just fine on there. Uh, any standard AR pistol grip will work fine. As far as your mil spec safeties, any of those are gonna work fine on there. Triggers, regular drop in or mil spec style triggers. We highly recommend something that's gonna have a heavier hammer spring since you're shooting 7.62 by 39. Our zero drop in trigger is probably gonna be ideal for that. Charging handle is gonna be proprietary. So I would recommend the zeroed ambi uh, charging handle. It's gonna be nice, it gets around your optics. Um, you do have a pick rail across the top. So whatever optic you would like to put on top of there, it's entirely up to you. You can do a little bit of everything there. When it comes to the handguard, you do wanna make sure that you're looking at DPMS, high patterned, no standard AR-15. Watch the 308 stuff. It has to be DPMS high pattern for it to be able to line up with the Picatinny and to fit around the barrel on this. 0.750 gas block, if you wanna change that out. And then 5.8 by 24 muzzle device on the end. So we now sell these completely decked out with a bunch of our new accessories, our new handguards, new Cerakote, uh, and all the zeroed accessories. So you probably won't find a need to do this, but if you choose to modify your Mark 47, at least you now have a starting point. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, again, I Mark 47's always been one of my babies. I love this gun, and I wanted you guys to be able to, you know, have some information to possibly enjoy yours just a little bit more. One more thing that I forgot to talk about. Everything you've seen me talk about in this video is specifically for the Mark 47 with a buffer tube. So you're looking at the Banshee models, the Resolute models, and things that predated Banshee and Resolute. So if you have a Mark 47 Descent, you have a lot more proprietary stuff, and most of this stuff isn't gonna work for you. So that could be a video for a later day, but this video was primarily for those of you with OG Mark 47s with a buffer tube.